I welcome every one of us to tonight's meeting. Um, I believe everyone did have a productive day. Um, we're going to continue from where we started yesterday. Yesterday, our topic was the seekers. The seekers. And in connection, in connection to that, while I was um, meditating on yesterday's topic, um, Holy Spirit began to brood, began to brood um, tonight's topic on my heart. And Holy Spirit said, you can't, you can't seek on, until you are willing to give up your heart. You can't seek until you are willing to surrender your heart. I want us to quickly go back to one of the child, um, the Bible reading we had yesterday. Can we quickly open to the book of Jeremiah 29, verse 13? Jeremiah 29, verse 13. Jeremiah 29, verse 13. You can go ahead. Jeremiah 29, 13. Jeremiah 29, verse 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 there is something God is trying to tell us about the uniqueness of this heart. That is the same place where the mind, the soul, all reside. It says, And ye shall seek me and find me. When what? When ye shall search for me with all your heart at this point it's not demanding that you search for me with your resources probably adventure with your money adventure with your position he's saying the first thing i need the most is your heart the only way seekers adventure maybe this topic should have come first before the one we had yesterday because you cannot seek accurately until your heart has been surrendered. Until the heart has been well positioned. If the heart is not well positioned, if the heart is not, is not ready, the seeking will be, you know, it won't be fruitful. It will never be fruitful. And the Lord is telling us, he said, when you search for me, the person can be searching, but he must search with all. Oh, that heart must search with everything that is inside, meaning God and God alone. Until I find you, God, I will never stop. It must search from the innermost part of it. God and God alone. Let's look at my topic tonight says, oh, I'm so sorry, Sister Wayne. Uh, my topic tonight is, it, 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 uh, well, I, I'm just trying to connect tonight's topic to yesterday's topic. So tonight's topic is, it all starts with your heart. It all starts with your heart, you know, because we were talking about seekers yesterday. I sincerely apologize for that. The topic of tonight says, it all starts with your heart, with your heart. The next, I'm going to have a couple of reading. If I have people who will volunteer to read, I really appreciate. Um, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. 1 Samuel 16, 7. Proverb 23, verse 26. Proverb 4, 23. 
Proverbs 27, 19. I'm going to call it again, Proverbs 23, 4 Samuel 16, 7. Proverbs 23, verse 26. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Proverbs 27, verse 19. Proverbs 3. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. Jeremiah 17, 9 to 10. I'm going to pause there. I still have a couple of reading, you know, but I'm going to pause there. So I'm going to I'm read. Going to read. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. Another translation says, I have rejected him. For the Lord seeketh not, for the Lord seeth not as men, as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance. But the Lord looketh on the heart. Men look on the outward appearance, but the Lord focus on the start, you know, the, the, the alignment of the heart. And that is why, you see, there's something I, I, I've, I've always said to anyone who is very close to me or who come in contact with me is, you see, no matter your struggle, if you can be very vulnerable with your heart before God, I'm telling you the honest and the honest truth. You will enjoy the mercy of God like never before. This heart, I'm being honest with you. No matter what your struggle is, no matter what, if you can be vulnerable with your heart, that God, this one is there. Lord, I'm still dealing with this. Lord, I struggle to study my Bible. Lord, I struggle to pray. Lord, I'm only sleeping when I'm praying. Lord, I'm only sleeping when I study the Bible. Because God, you see, many of us, we enjoy the sovereign, the sovereign mercy of God when we are not doing right. It is the sovereign, it is the sovereignty of God that comes to us even when we have gone astray. We don't pray, we don't study, and, <clears throat> and that mercy keep coming to us, keep coming to us, keep coming to us. That is the sovereign mercy of God. However, in reality, when you become a child of God, the Bible says in John 3, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believes in him shall have eternal life. You see, once you become the son of God, you have eternal life. God will begin to demand that now, because where the whole relationship takes place, it's not in the, you know, it's being displayed on the outward in terms of our service and how we live, but the real relationship and where the transaction, everything takes place is in the heart. The whole emotions, the whole love, the love affair between men and God, everything takes place in the heart. Everything. The communication, transaction, negotiation, everything takes place in the heart. Everything takes place in the heart. And that is why we must do everything in our capacity to make sure we surrender that heart. When Samuel got to the house of Jesse, he saw one of the brothers of David 
The Bible never disclosed to us what the young man did wrong. However, the revelation I caught from where we just read now is something is wrong with the heart of that brother. Something, even though he was killed, because those brothers of, of David, they were part of King Saul's army. Yet, their heart was not aligned. Oh my God. You know, today, this will allow me to say another thing that Holy Spirit told me this morning. <laughs> At a point, I had to sit down and begin to do a little bit of research. Holy Spirit said, Who gave birth to Joseph? I said, Jacob. <sighs> Holy Spirit said, How come he was more different? than the rest of his brothers. I said, Holy Spirit, I don't know. He said, it's because there was, a, there, were, there were dealings, there were things that the father, trans, the, he, 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 they were teaching, just like if you go and read the book of Proverbs from chapter one, you'll hear where the book of Proverbs chapter one begin to say, my son, listen to my teaching. You know, one day I began to sit down on that book of Proverbs and I began to realize one of the reasons Solomon asked the Lord in the dream to give him the spirit of wisdom on how to lead the people was because David has poured so much in the heart of this young man. One of the reasons why we could see that Joseph could withstood all the pressure he went through was because the father has poured so, so much inside him. His father has poured so much inside him. That was why we could see, because I kept asking myself, you know, I, I shared that revelation here before. What, how could God, right in the front of God, right in the presence of God, he was being thrown in the pit. Right in the presence of God, he was being sold as a slave. Right in the presence of God. Because don't forget, for, for, Joseph, for Joseph to say it boldly to us in the house of Potiphar, to Potiphar's wife, that how should I do such an evil thing before God? It means this guy was extremely conscious of God's presence. He was extremely conscious of God's presence. Very conscious. So meaning he knew that ah, but God is with me. How am I going through this? He came as a slave. And yet, he had the opportunity now to live a better life by committing sin with Potiphar's wife. But he said, how do I commit the same God who saw, is it, what I'm trying to say is there was something about his heart. The heart of Joseph. There was something. There was, you see, <laughs> oh my God. I said something yesterday. Mary, our brother, Ima, uh, Yano, read a Bible reading for us yesterday in our meeting. Mary, I believe it was John 20. Mary sat in the presence of God. And Jesus was telling us that Mary has chosen the right thing. And Martha, who was very busy, compassionate, Jesus was telling us that Martha, Martha, you are busy about many things. But according to time and season, hey, please pay attention to the word I'm using. According to time and season, because my time with you is limited, but you don't know. My time with you will be going very soon. I'll be going back to the Father. According to time and season, your sister has chosen the right thing. And no man can take it away. 
this woman sought the Lord. Even when Jesus died, she was still seeking for a dead body. Ah, what did she know about Jesus? What did she know about the love of God? What were the revelations she caught about Jesus that many people didn't know? The heart. There was something Joseph knew that despite all the pain, all the pain, you see, we could have said that whatever Joseph said at the house of Potiphar, maybe it was just a coincidence. But guess what? Even when he got to the prison, Joseph was still becoming a man of significance and relevance. Telling the cup bearer, why is your face, why is your countenance falling? Brethren, a man who is offended with God cannot interpret another person's dream. A man who has lost the presence of God cannot interpret another person's dream. This tells us that something, there was something about the heart of Joseph that was so stable and solid on God. Something has happened to his heart. And this takes me to another revelation the Holy Spirit showed me today. The same Jacob that gave birth to Joseph, gave birth to Reuben, gave birth to all of them. How come Joseph stood out? Look at what was said, I believe, in the book of Exodus. I believe Exodus chapter 1. He said, there arose a king that knew not Joseph. Meaning the moment Joseph died, we couldn't see anyone who carried the same stature, not just in power, but in mentality. Look at the three Hebrew guys. They didn't have power when they came. They came with a mentality. There was something about their heart. Because you see, what is in the heart is what controls what happens in the brain. Holy Spirit shared something with me today. Holy Spirit said, my son, look at the children of Isaac, Jacob and Esau. Two came from twins, twins. One, he sought, he sought God in Genesis 32 from verse 24 until he made a name for himself. Jacob, Jacob gave up everything. He sent forth his family. He gave up everything. He sought the face of God. Because why? There was something in new about the prophecy given to Abraham. Isaac shared the same prophecy with him. If you go and read the book of Genesis very well, Jacob was referred to the, the son that was always home. I'm trying to paraphrase now. Always home with the father, meaning there were many deep and secret things in him. But Esau, he was an hunter. Two people, twins, one made a name. He made a name, one. His name, what came out of Esau? There were many nations that came out of Esau that became an enemy of God. I believe Edom was one of them. Virgin, what I'm trying to tell you is two siblings can come out of a family. The question I bring to you tonight is what do you want to make of your own name? You know, I said something yesterday and I kept meditating on it. It's the, everybody will present the kind of God they have found to you. The question I'm asking you tonight, what kind of God will you present to your children or to your generation? Joseph presented the God of deep wisdom, the God of holiness, God of holiness to us. His brother slept with his father's wife. He saw he gave up food, gave up his destiny. Brethren, what I'm trying to tell, and you see, like I said yesterday, I don't have, any, believe me, I know that we see in part and we know in part. 
But one thing I want you to know is know this God. For no, and when I mean no, go deeper. Go know God for you. I'm telling you the truth. You see, mark my word. Go and check the lives of many people that backslided in the church or many churches. It was not Muslims that, that took many of them away. It was Christians in the church that took them to the club. It was Christians in the church that began to commit fornication. It was Christians like them that brought them down. It wasn't people of the world. Brethren, make a deliberate decision. Bring the heart. If you go and read Psalm 51, where, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, David began to tell the Lord, Say, give me a new spirit and a new heart. Something has happened to this heart, oh God. Give me a new heart, oh God. Give me a new spirit. This heart has been injured. This heart has been corrupted with so much, many things. Lord, switch. Give me a, delete this one. Because it is correct. It is corrupted. Give me a new heart. Let's look at our second reading. Proverbs 23, verse 26. Proverbs 23, verse 26. Oh, my son, give me your heart. May your eyes take delight in following my ways. Thank you, Sister Tunoa. My son, give me thy heart. <laughs> Brethren, every time I read this place, I burst into tears. When we went to go minister in Maryland, this was no part of my administration at all. I was up with the, the, the theme of the program was the hand of God. And while the two people ministering ahead of me were ministering, Holy Spirit said, do you know that many people who are here, their heart has turned against me. <laughs> Brethren, please know this God. And you see, this journey becomes sweet the more you can heal from God. I'm telling the truth. A person can be dancing. A person can be blessed. When I mean blessed, they're driving a good car. And yet, their heart is not in alignment with God. A person can look so blessed. So, so blessed. I'm telling you, I'm telling you a sincere truth. And yet, their heart is completely far. It's completely far away from God. Do you know that even a person can be singing, be leading the whole church to the throne of God, and yet the person's heart is far. The person who is leading, leading the people, his own heart, our own heart, is completely far away from the God. The, the same God that he is bringing people to, he or she, our heart or his heart, might be completely far away from such a God. You know how you know? How many, how many preachers, have you had some people preach? They preach so powerfully. And right after the meeting, they begin to say things contrary to the things they have preached. That is what, that is an example. I'm telling you, brethren, I'm begging you tonight, surrender your heart. Give him. Do you know your struggle? I know my struggle. Give him, give him your heart. Give so because if you if you don't give him that heart, it's going to be very difficult. Because everything happens in the heart. Our life is what we will become can only be determined by the stature of the heart. If that heart is fragile. If that heart is not, is not growing in stature, in a short time, it will be revealed. It will be revealed. Let's go to the next reading. The next reading is Proverbs 4.23. Anyone who is there can go ahead. Guard your heart above all else. For it determines the course of your life. Thank you, Sister Tosin. Guard it. <laughs> you know, 
when you put people take precious jewelry people take things that are very expensive they take them to the banks to lock them in a safe and the Lord is saying my son my daughter if you want your life to become glorious God did guide it jealously do see when when it comes to this guidance guiding your heart oh it will affect your choices it will affect the kind of association you keep it will affect the kind of songs you listen to it will affect the kind of movies if you are it will affect everything i'm telling you it will affect discussion some kind of discussion, it will affect everything. Because out of this act, that is where the transaction of issues of life, that is where decisions are made. Even when Jesus, when God, when God wants to do when God wants to do anything and the devil wants to do anything to a man, they go for the heart. God cannot do anything with a man until he captures the heart. The art, and that is why both God and the devil, they are both contending for the art. Every time God wants to do something, he begins to whisper, let us pray. Get your Bible. Let us study. He wants to do something to the art. He wants to, he wants to release something upon the art. He wants... Because, you see, faith is built on this heart. Our next reading, Proverbs 27, 19. Anyone? Proverbs 27, 19. Proverbs 27, 19 says, as a faith is reflected in water, so the heart reflects the real person. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Hmm. As in water, I think it's Tabanoa, as in water face, as in water face, answered to face, meaning once you stare in front of water, it begins to reveal the shadow of your face. He says, so the art of a man reveal a man. Their heart. You can, you don't need to slice their heart open. A man, the decisions of a man, the words of a man will reveal the heart of that man. <laughs> Brethren, this is not psychic. It's just wisdom. What a person says, no matter how secretive you are, the things that comes out from your lips, it tells me, me, what is happening in your heart. The things you desire, that you begin to desire, all of a sudden, the things you begin to desire also tells me what is happening to your heart. Your decisions and actions also reflect what is going on in your heart. And that is why for, for those who are in relationship, you can tell when something is happening to the heart of your partner. I'm telling you, when your partner begins to desire things they don't desire before, something is happening to the heart. When they are dressing the way they never dressed before, something is happening to the heart. Pay attention to the heart. Pay attention. These hearts, remember what I said at the beginning. We cannot seek God accurately if the heart is not in alignment. Let's go to the next reading. Proverbs 3 1 to 2. All right. Uh, well, now you can go. Okay.
was going to. Oh, sorry. Okay. Go ahead. I'll just. Okay, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, my son, forget not my law, but let thine art keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Thank you. Can you see that? My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart, not thy head, let thy heart keep my commandment. Let this heart keep. <laughs> Remember what we read before? Say, God did. That heart is a safe place. Just like people take things to the bank for safety. That heart too is a God did. Is it out of it? God did. This one is telling us. He said, let the heart keep. That heart can keep, it can accommodate, it can preserve, it can protect. You can keep things there. Let the heart keep my commandments. Why? Verse 2. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee on one condition. If you can keep my commandments in your heart. You must be willing to keep it. Brethren, I'm hearing the Holy Spirit telling me, say some of us, you have to make a bold decision and do it with, with some association in your crew. I don't know who that person is, but this is what I had the Holy Spirit telling me now. You see, there's someone here, you need to make a bold decision and disconnect with those who are corrupting your heart. You see, they said, bad communication does what? Corrupt good manners, if I'm correct. Let's go to our next reading. Jeremiah 17. You know what? Before we read Jeremiah 17, 10, can someone read Psalm 119, verse 11? Psalm 119, verse 11. All right, I read. Thy word, I buy what? Heed in my heart that I may not sin against thee. We read in one of the proverbs, say, guard your heart with all diligence. We read just now, say, keep my word, my commandment in your heart. Now, this one is telling us, say, thy word, have I hid? You can put something there. Your word, have I hid in my heart that I may not sin. So, a believer who doesn't store up the word of God in his heart, most likely will be overcome by sin, will be overcome by the enemy. Brethren, Please, I encourage you tonight, guard your heart with all diligence. Store, load up your heart with the word of God. Put the word of God there so that when the enemy raise a standard, what is inside you too can also raise a standard. Because the enemy will always come. I'm telling you. Every battle, every battle in life is start from the mind first. That is why before the enemy can get a person to sin, it starts with the heart. That heart is always the first target. When the enemy wants to lead a person to sin, he brings a wrong image. It makes the person to begin to focus on that wrong image. Why? He's doing something to the heart. He knows that once the heart get captivated with that image to a point and begin to believe it. They have to begin to work on how to activate it. The same thing spiritually when it comes to on, you know, the things of God. God too wants you to meditate on the word until that word becomes imagination. Your heart begins to imagine it. Then you begin to activate it. 
Because brethren, like we said yesterday, God is looking for seekers. He's looking for those that, because no man can find this God accurately except we are willing to seek him with all our heart. Let's go to Jeremiah 17 now. Jeremiah 17, 9 to 10. Then let me give, before we read Jeremiah, let me give the rest of my reading. Numbers 13, 30 to 33. Numbers 14, 6 to 9. Romans 12, 2. Matthew 22, verse 37. Numbers 13, 30 to 33. Numbers 14, 6 to 9. Romans 12, 2. Then Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel 36, 26. All right. Jeremiah 17, 9 to 10. The human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? But I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. I give all the people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. Mm. Thank you, Sister Tosin. Brethren, you can see that God, there are many references about his heart. He, he looks, and that is why, I, I was talking to my wife, I believe on either Sunday or Monday night, and I said, only, you see, that statement that people say, people will say only God knows who is really serving him. It's, it's half truth. It's not 100% truth. The person themselves also know if they are truly serving God. Even if I deceive all of you who is there, I can't deceive myself. Even if I try to pretend that I'm deceiving myself, deep down, deep, deep inside my heart, I know I'm deceiving myself. What I'm trying to tell you is a person, and that is why, you know, I don't want to look like I'm coming against some things I believe in. I believe so much in prayer. For many of you who are close to me, I believe so much in it. But guess what? We must always learn to strike balance on the word of God. The word of God. The word of God. I'm telling you, I believe so much in long hours of prayer. But the word, the word, the word is very important for we, and that is why. You no, know, you see, one of the one of the indices, one of the indices of a true believer is love. Love. How can you be speaking so much in tongue? You speak, you speak in tongue so solid. People love you the way you pray, but yet you don't display love to people. Then what is what where is what is what what is happening to the heart? What has happened to that heart? How can you tell me you love God? You and you pray so much. You you you, you know you, you are you are a worshiper, you are a prayer warrior, you are you are a protocol officer. You know, people see the things you display, and yet you can't sacrifice anything for people. You can't forgive, you can't display love. Something is wrong with the heart. Something is wrong. I'm telling you, this is one of the biggest. Let me tell you. I'm telling you another secret of our generation. This is one of the things the fathers, they know the secret. They place emphasis on the heart so much. I'm telling you, they place emphasis. Our generation, we know so much revelation. We can pray. We can speak in tongue. But many people, the heart, something is wrong with the heart. I'm telling the truth. The heart plenty things, pride inside. Many things is wrong with the heart. Because we think this journey is about display. <laughs> Sometimes, I'm being honest with you, and I'm saying this with all humility. 
Sometimes I feel like I just want to run away with my wife and I just be in one village, inside one forest, just seeking the face of God. Since I gave my life to Christ, all I want to be, I just want to be like Enoch. I just want to know him. Brethren, this, jo this journey is big. It, <laughs> let me shock you. When I was preparing for this, I was meditating. And one of the fathers of faith that died, late Benson Idausa, Bishop, Archbishop Benson Idausa, him and Rena Bonke, they did a crusade many years ago. Over one million people was in that crusade. And Holy Spirit asked me, said, my son, where are many of those people that came to the crusade today? I said, I don't know. I said, my son. He said, the biggest issue I've always had with many generations is all they want is to collect from me. They don't want to know me. They don't want to know me. All they want is to use me and collect from me. Not They don't want to know. <laughs> Brethren, do you know how many thousands of people gather in men? I came from a background for Mountain of Fire. Mountain of Fire service alone in Lagos, Sunday service alone is close to almost 100,000 people in one service. <laughs> what about winners? What about dunamis? What about redeem? Imagine if the same heart that those general of Asia carries is the heart all the members carry. What do you think will happen to the old world? Think about that. Think. I want you to think. Do you know one of the reasons why Christianity we are not making so much effect? Effectiveness is not in, it's not in the screaming of our prayer. The heart. The heart. The heart is one of the biggest issues. The heart. The heart. Yet we see a man of God like Dade Kumoe, Bile, Dade Adeboe, they pray so solemnly and yet you see so much manifestation. It's the heart. Aside from their consecration, lifestyle, fasting and prayer, the heart. The heart is right. Brethren, please, I'm begging you. I, I ask you again, what kind of God are you willing to present to your children? I have mentors, and I believe some of you have mentors too. But don't just be like your mentor. Be better than your mentor. Be better. Do better in action, in decision, in everything, in modesty, everything more than the mentor. That is the mindset I carry. The Bible says in John 14, verse 12, Say ye shall do more. Jesus was telling us, you will do more. So why should we settle for less? The heart. The heart. Please, I beg you, no matter what you are going through today, evaluate the heart. Evaluate the heart. The reason why many people have not found the help of God is because they walk into the presence. You know, I said something here yesterday. I said it two days ago. God doesn't talk automatically. I'm telling the truth. Like um, uh, uh, um, Apostle Arume will say, God doesn't talk much, but he answer much. Please, I beg you. I beg you. Learn, learn. Hey, how do I say this? Learn of God. So that you can, you can, you can, you can find the, have you, <laughs> Apostle Saiya has said this many times. He said, I know how to keep God, Jesus in my room. I know how to keep the Holy Spirit that he will keep talking. It's a strategy. It's a strategy. I'm telling you, he says, there is a place, he says, when you know this, and what's that strategy? Intimacy. You cannot, how do you, how do you hear God? No, no. You have to use a strategy of prayer. The, it, you will journey in intimacy through the word, through prayer. For you to pick his voice. He doesn't just speak. I'm telling you, he doesn't. That's why some people, they have waited and waited and waited, waited for years. And they are, when will God speak? Why? Because you are not doing what you are supposed to do to make him speak. He said, call upon me. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. 
You have to call. We read it here yesterday. Jeremiah 29. From verse 12. He said, when you go, when you call upon me and pray unto me. You see, he gave us the strategy. You want to hear the voice of God? You must learn how to. You must charge your spirit in prayer. Then all those all those, uh, what they call it, distraction, all the noise in our spirit become quiet. You cannot quiet that spirit until you charge it. I said something here before. I believe it was early this year. This is a glass cup. No matter how beautiful a beautiful iron is, if that iron, I can touch that iron like this, touch the face of the iron, until the iron is hot, it becomes insignificant. Until that iron is hot, that iron will never, never perform its role. It will never perform its job. Until your spirit is charged, you can't connect with God. I'm telling you the truth. The God we are is in a deep place. Until your spirit, and you say for your spirit to be charged, you have to stay. You have to stay. You have to stay. So that the heart can be aligned. So that the heart can be aligned. I'm begging you. I'm beg it is time for you and I to begin to hear, God, what are you saying concerning my life? Where we read before, Jeremiah 29 verse 13, he said, when you sat for me with all your heart, one of the reasons why the Holy Spirit or, or God doesn't appear quickly. He wants to know how desperate you really want to, you want that result or you want whatever you are asking. So in our pursuit, when we become extremely determined, then their heart is all focused. All focused. That's what it means. Please, I beg you. Every services, most especially Sunday, Charge your spirit. I'm telling you, charge your spirit. If I'm lying, I want you to practice this for three weeks. Let your spirit, be, especially during the week, fast, maybe twice a week. Then Saturday night into Sunday, charge your spirit in the place of prayer. Charge it. Then mo Sunday morning, charge in tongues. Charge in tongues and in worship. Come to that service and tell me what will happen to you. The person who is sitting beside you, who is not charged, they will be hearing something. But you, you will be hearing plenty, plenty. A charged spirit pick plenty things. When your spirit is charged, you pick plenty. You hear, you hear plenty. I'm telling you the truth. These are secret things. But many times we walk in, it doesn't happen that way. You have, you must be preparing your spirit daily. Did you observe in the book of Exodus, God will tell Moses, prepare the people. Why? To the point that they cannot even have intimacy. He will tell them, wash yourself, prepare. It's part of preparation to meet with the master. How do you meet with the master casually? You can't meet with him casually. You have to be prepared. You prepare by charging. You charge up your spirit. Brethren, I beg you. Something, <laughs> I won't say it today, but very soon I'll say it. Something almost happened to my family recently, last week. <laughs> oh my God. And, you know, I've been on charge recently and Holy Spirit revealed it to me in the dream. And I dealt with that person seriously. And Holy Spirit was asking me, listen to this. Holy Spirit was asking me, why didn't you kill this team? And I said, uh, I was having pity. I don't want the I don't want the person to die. I know the spirit kept quiet. Guess what? The next morning, I was at work. I just kept singing, thirty minutes, forty-five minutes, one hour. But I realized the kind of song I was singing, they were a song of victory. They were a song of. All of a sudden, I just received a text and a call. Ah, ah, brethren. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. I'm not superior than you. We, both of us, we serve the same God. We don't try to prove anything to you. You see, I'm trying to communicate that one of the worst things, do you know that there are many things that happen to us because we were not charged? 
Our spirit didn't pick it. There were many things that God was trying to say. He was screaming. Go and read the book of Exodus. Moses was on the mountain. They were in the valley. They were, they were seeing different things. Moses on the mountain could pick. You see, when you are high in the spirit, you see far. When your spirit is high, when your antenna, your spirit is charged, you are high. To see far, you hear clearly. When you are in the valley, you can't hear clearly. Please, I beg you, don't allow the enemy sneak in to the back door because you refuse to charge, because you refuse to align your heart. Please, I beg you, our time is fast spent. Which one is, can we read the book of Numbers, Numbers 13, 13? I want to show you something from the book of Numbers. Um, let's go to Numbers 13, 13 to 33. A fast reader, please. But, Ke but Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. Let's go at once to take the land, he said. We can certainly conquer it. But the other men who had explored the land with him disagreed. We can't go up against them. They are stronger than we are. So they spread this bad report about the land among them, among the Israelites. The land we traveled through and explored will devour anyone who goes to live there. All the people we saw we are huge. We even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. Next to them, we felt like grasshoppers, and that's what they thought too. See that? Twelve people were sent on an errand. Only two, only two people's hearts was aligned. Twelve of them saw the same thing. Twelve of them, they saw the same thing, but only two people's hearts interpreted aright. Only, oh my God, please marry, marry a person who know God. I don't know why I'm deviating to marriage now. Marry a person, believe me, I have made some radical decision in my marriage because my wife trusts me. I'm telling, I've made some dangerous decision. She will just be like, it's okay, go ahead. If you don't marry a person who know God, there are some decisions that will advance your life. They don't see the things of God. They always, they always, they sound nonsense, nonsense. They are very. No, oh my God! If you don't marry a person who know God, if you say some things, if the person interpret it from logic, that person might be grounded. That is what happened to these people. They went on an assignment. Moses sent them on an assignment. They saw this. This is. I sincerely apologize. Can someone quickly take us to the next chapter? Chapter 14. Chapter 14, 6 to 9. That's our last reading. Please, I sincerely apologize. Chapter 14, 6 to 9. I want you to hear. Caleb said, I want you to hear what Joshua and Caleb said. Two of the men who had explored the land, Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, tore their clothes. They said to all the people of Israel, the land we traveled through and explored, it's a wonderful land. And if the Lord is pleased with us, he will bring us safely into that land and give it to us. It is a rich land flowing with milk and honey. Do not rebel against the Lord and don't be afraid of the people of the land. They are only helpless prey to us. They have no protection, but the Lord is with us. Don't be afraid of them. Thank you, Sister Tosu. Did you hear that? King James said they are bread. What was the confidence of Caleb? He said, they have no protect. Oh my God. The same statement, Kaba, the same statement David said to Goliath, who is this on Sarko? King, oh my God. King David, a whole king with a crown, with many soldiers, forgot completely the covenant of God. A young teenager came. Who is this uncircumcised, uncircumcised Philistine with no covenant? The same thing this guy is saying. Brethren, your heart will determine how you interpret life. Your heart will determine how you interpret what the Lord is doing. Your heart will determine everything. Please, I beg you, 
as we round up, I apologize taking two minutes of your time. Please surrender your heart to God. Let God help you. Stay in the secret place. Or else, the danger that the Lord told me about this topic, the danger, if you don't align your heart, your heart will continue to interpret this from logic. Your, and it is, the devil will continue to manipulate that heart to continue to... Please, I beg you. I beg you. I beg you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for how far you have taken us tonight. Holy Spirit, have your way. Teach us your word. Lord, as we go to bed tonight, encounter us. Visit us. Visit us. Let your name alone be exalted, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow night. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Have a good night, sir. Thank you, man. Thank you, Bertal. You're welcome. Thank you, Bertal. God bless you. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, sir.